Those Damn Ross Kids is a podcast for adults, and the opinions expressed do not reflect the opinions of our employers or even ourselves. We'd like to hear from you. Give us a call at 419-528-TDRK to leave a voicemail, and we just may play it on the show. Three green circles. One, two, three, four, five, six green gummy bears. Hmm. Are these are these uh, are these vodka gummy bears? Mm-hmm. Oh, so, so you're choosing to take your alcohol in solid form? <laughs> well, kind of. Or gel- g- g- gelatin. I, I prefer to call it gummy cereal. <laughs> like just eating it out of a bowl, mm-hmm. using a straw to get the remnants at the bottom. No, it's a styrofoam bowl. <laughs> like what? You, what you're describing sounds like. Some kind of like weird art art installation about how we're poisoning our bodies. <laughs> like you have styrofoam, which is a carcinogen. You have gummy bears, which has I, th- I think I think that they're made out of horse eyeballs. Gummy bears, and uh, <laughs> no, they're not. Then, then, then you have uh, well, well, what's gelatin, Chris? It's horse eyeballs and kitten tears, and then you got you know, it's like a good old fashioned alcohol. Is it? Is I, got it is, 12, I got twelve gummy bears floating face up in a styrofoam <laughs> bowl of vodka, and that's a Wednesday. Slow, slow, slow camera zoom in. <laughs> a loud thrumming sound in the background. Thrumming makes thumb drumming. Yeah, it's like a tech deck. Those Damn Ross Kids, a conversation between brothers, featuring Chris and Cole Ross. Chris, so okay, so I've, I've got I've got a question for you. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a series of people, and I'm going to ask you what kind of atrocities they committed in order to earn their middle names. Okay. Okay. Neil Patrick Harris. Butt sex. Melissa Joan Hart. <laughs> Heart sex. <laughs> oh, no, like the aorta? Joan? <laughs> jo- <laughs> Joan sex. It would have been funnier if you said butt sex again, by the way. Um, oh, my bad. <laughs> Do it again, then. <laughs> Charles Nelson Riley. Nelson. <laughs> okay, I didn't ask you to say the middle name. I asked you what atrocity did Charles Nelson Riley commit? Nelsoning. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, he he uh, he gave a full Nelson to JFK. That's how he got he, that disease, Kleinfelter's or whatever. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, John F. Kleinfelter's. Hmm. Hey, Chris, what's your name? Chris. My name is Cole. And this is episode what? Oh man, one thirty. You got me. Uh, <laughs> just all you have to do is look at the like we're behind. All you have to do is look at the website. Me. You, you, I got a shot to the gut. You got me. <laughs> yeah, scooped you. Got your journal. Oh man. Um. Yeah. Episode number one thirty of the Internet Comedy Podcast. Those damn Ross those damn kids. Ross kids. Oh, okay, cool. I scooped you there too. You gotta go, uh-huh. you, you, gotta, you gotta pick up the speed. You gotta pick up the speed. My name, we're as here. I said, was Chris. Your name is Cole, and we're here to entertain your asses. Are we? Yeah, I suppose. I, I suppose I did flip that around on you, didn't I? Yep, the script was flipped. Oh yeah, took it and I turned it. Mm-hmm. Every time. You're better than me. That's what mm-hmm. flip means. <laughs> flip. <laughs> oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah, we're behind this week. I'm sorry, guys. I had some horrible diarrhea. Yeah, yeah. That you you said that in that intro. I cut out because of the Skype quality. Yeah, the Skype the Skype was bad. The poop was the the, the poop runny. The, it, it was the summer of it was the, it was the it was summer, summer of, of fourteen. It was the summer of fourteen. <laughs> the Skype was runny. The poop was slow. It's <laughs> yeah, man. It was it was a wonderful time to be alive. That's what it cops was. Cops episodes were DVR'd. <laughs> did, did you, is there, do you seriously have cops episodes DVR'd? I have more cops than I know what to do with. So, 
I don't do drugs. I watch people do drugs. <laughs> yeah, I watch the aftermath of drugs. I, I can't beat my baby mama. I'm damn sure going to watch somebody. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's <laughs> 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 do, do you do you think to a certain extent like that like watching cops is uh is 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 sleaze porn like so you know to a to to, to a certain extent like you know if uh, okay so this this is weird and it's also aspirational because you know i'm i'm, I'm me but if i had a, if i had a lady around i probably wouldn't be watching as much uh porn as i as 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 i some you know god what am i saying out loud theoretically a nominal person probably wouldn't watch as much porn if they had a willing partner around okay but you know, if you're if you're the kind of person who is who is restricting your like, I'm not afraid of the cops like mentality, like that that little that little loud voice that's inside all of us. If, if 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 you were if you were restricting if you were not restricting that if you were living cops, would you be watching as much cops? And is this some kind of like perverse release for you? True thing said to our mother last night via via the telephone. Oh Jesus, <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? Ma- Chris says to mom, watching cops. Mom, why are you watching so much cops? Chris, to mom, better than porn, you know, real violent stuff. Oh, God. Why would you even joke about that? Because <laughs> it was like, it just seems as random. Like, I, I, suppo- I suppose. Like, it's, it's to your point. It's, it's the same. It's the same vein, I, I guess, but that is the, the one on top. It's a hard R, okay? It's a hard R. That's 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 what bugs me. Well, I just meant like real violent, you okay, know? Okay, like mm. <laughs> better than snuff, snuff, like porn. twisting your your heel, you know? <laughs> oh God, or her heel? Yeah, one huh. of the two. Yeah, that's not just... how you do it. <laughs> actions, actions, a little north of that. I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is okay so either you're wrong or the entire country of germany's wrong chris mom's wrong yeah now she's come up a lot the judge past me episodes. okay geez I, I guess i will i don't know porn like real real <sighs> violent stuff yeah like well did, like did that did that quiet her did, did she did, did, did she cease her line of inquiry or was she uh no it seemed to give her like some sort of humming like she wanted to one-up me Oh but no! Then didn't because something shiny distracted her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think I think that you're you're much uh, you're much more cavalier with your conversations. I'm just saying I'm restricted a little bit. No, I, it just depends. It, okay, I suppose. Uh, it's a, it's a self selecting thing. You wouldn't say like, oh, what are you having for dinner tonight? Oh, chili, cool. Like that that, that that's not interesting. Pod fodder. <laughs> no. Yeah, Potter. Portmanteaus, Chris. Let's talk about her interrogating me about my decisions in life. <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind of a weird question, isn't it? Crying is funny. <laughs> Why? What? Crying is funny. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Should I cut mm. this all out? <laughs> no, leave it in. Leave it in. Okay. Evidence, my friend. Yeah, okay. Cool. I suppose. Paper trails. Paper chase. <clears> hmm. <throat> cutting trail yeah yeah i don't know one handful of acid the other handful of confetti paper trails man (laughs) i thought you were talking about like acid that somebody would throw on the throw throw on them if they uh, disgrace them on the muslims i suppose nah okay wow we're we're off to a start we are off to a start here (laughs) we got a lot in we got a couple hard r's a couple hard r's some 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 some, some general (laughs) some generalizations about yeah it's just, it is a question of like where they get their acid but i don't know it's okay it's it's it's, a, it's okay if we if we get on the ground what that's from cops I just, okay yeah i it's like chris, to yell at everyone chris, chris you need to mute your television you need to mute your television if that's what no, you're gonna i do. yelled that okay so i want to yell that to somebody and realize it get on the ground yeah, and what's it's funny because they, they don't curse. Because no. if it was me, it'd be like, get on the fucking ground! Yeah, well, obviously you would. But, oh, oh so you think you think they self-censor. They don't want to be, they don't want to show the... Uh, I don't think they want to be that guy. They, they, they don't want to be the dirty cop. Put your hands up, I'm going to tase a cracker! That, did I tell you about the time when... When they were filming a, a, a police show outside of my, uh, outside of my, my, my college home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Did I, say, did I say it on the show? I don't think so. Okay. So You told me about the neighbor that committed suicide, too. Yeah, that was real sad. I think about him a lot. He was a nice guy, and he was on the up and up, except the university screwed him over, and it got him back into the heroin. He was like going to school to be a, to be an addiction counselor, to be having... a heroin tester. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to you have to follow your bliss. <laughs> More accurately, you have to chase your dragons, right? Um, damn you, Z. <laughs> damn you, the University of Cincinnati. They fucked him over real bad, and it's and it's super. So it just it just shows how fragile it is. If you have if you have you know a history of addiction, you know all it takes is some stress to drive you right back. And a and, family and a love of birds. What's that? A family and a love of birds. I don't I don't I don't understand what you're saying. Just trying to describe a normal guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh <laughs> so so yeah, he he was he was going to school to be an addiction counselor. Um he was like all the way through it except there was something with the money and something with not being able to get a certification, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, he I th- I think the canonical version of the story, you know, just we didn't really talk about it too much. Uh, with his with his girlfriend who was left you know left behind with uh with her with their two adorable pit bulls just the sweetest dogs uh, you'd ever they seen they didn't have kids no no mm. no two uh like two two really sweet pit bulls though um and uh i th- i think the he ra- rather that he he was he was so worried about returning to heroin and he was in such a weird state of mind that he uh shot himself in the head trigger warning by the way um for anybody who's sensitive to that uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it was a real bummer. So do you want me to tell you the actual funny story and not the awful story that makes me really sad just to think about it because he was like a legit nice dude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> lived in a real shithole neighborhood, uh, to the South of the university of Cincinnati, um, uh, in the, uh, like the, the, the area of town commonly known as Clifton. Okay. And you were, you, you, you've been there lots of houses, really tight, Really tightly packed together and, you know, mostly student housing, like, you know, cheap, cheap uh, apartments that uh, kind of like slummy landlords would rent out to students. And because people are only going to be there for like a year or so, they didn't really take care of the place. And so you would just get like douche, you know, douchebags who moved into a place and threw a bunch of parties and whatever. The worst of all, I think, um, was the house that was directly to my, like, like directly right by us, uh, which had a gigantic porch on the front. Like a like you would expect like if there was a hot tub there there would be like some swinging key parties happening there like just a real rockin' porch which of course drew all the shitheads who wanted to have like porch parties you know in our muggy muggy uh, Cincinnati uh, springs and falls and so consistently it was always the worst human beings who moved into that house one year I forget it was probably like my junior year or so uh, the, the the house really really uh, saw fit to uh, just fire uh, like shoot firecrackers off of the uh, off of the porch um, at pretty much any any notice directly into a very dry tree too um, and because the houses were so were so packed together I was worried that they were gonna burn my fucking stuff to the ground and so you know I called the cops and uh, you know other people had called the cops as well. And I'd ask them, you know, this was after asking them, like, hey, can you guys please stop shooting fireworks or I'm going to call the cops? And they did the very mature thing. Look at this guy. You know, being real shitheads. So I was like, okay, I'm going to call the cops. It's fine. And so, like a minute or so after I called the cops, it felt like it was like that short. Like the street shuts down and you can see from both sides just like trucks full of people. Like like full of full, like full of police officers, like SWAT trucks, whatever you know, drove drove up and like you know they like all of the people on the porch left and went inside the house like hiding because they knew they were coming for them, right? It's kind of like or you know just they know cops and underage drinking, you know they're probably there to 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 to, to bust some heads, right? And pigs, so yeah, pigs, yeah, yeah. So the so so the so the police officers go up and say, hey, you've been shooting fireworks off of your porch. We're gonna do some busts or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And I was real curious because they were cameramen. I was like, oh, they must be filming some kind of show, which I believe was called Campus Cops. I was like, huh, that's really weird. And so like it was just funny to watch that. Like maybe they rolled out all the extra guns in order to try and uh, you know 
provide provide something for the camera and so the 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 police woman who had you know talked to them i you know i was i was sitting on my porch drinking a beer or something like that and uh, i was listening to it and she was she was saying you know yeah there just some there there are some kids they uh they 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 were getting a little they were they were, they were getting a little rowdy we had to come by and tell them to knock it off or else we were going to come back and take them away right okay. and uh one of the one of the kids who lived in the house one of the people who was at the party lit lit a bottle rocket and shot it at this police woman wait wasn't this police women of cincinnati no no it was a different show i thought it was no police women of cincinnati was just the television show that i never stopped hearing about when it was on the air because mom was like oh you're gonna have to like not even just mom just like people like oh you you like can't go on reading like reading road anymore and I was like, oh, it's... like that main thoroughfare that I have to go on? Yeah, don't go on that road anymore. No, Mom, I don't watch that. It's real, really just <laughs> porn I watch. Ah, oh, Jesus. You know, real violent stuff. <laughs> I'm dropping markers left and right, dude. I can't say you <laughs> I mean, it's not funny. <laughs> okay. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because, because you're saying it in a jokey voice. No. Okay. All right. Okay, can I tell you a story? Well, did you want me to tell you what happened? Yeah, the police came and you are you were the douche that called them. <laughs> I know. So fires the bottle racket at her. And she's like, motherfucker, and pulls out the nightstick. And then more people show up and the place is just completely raided. Hmm. You know? I don't know. I think, it's, I, I think it's a fucking dick move. We live in a society, Chris, okay? And if you are we asked... Live in- we live in a world. <laughs> we live in a society, and you know what? If you if you if you're asked several times and notified, hey, if you don't stop shooting fireworks into the dry tree that stands over both of our houses, because that is both inconsiderate and something that is not, uh, you know, and, and something that, that is not neither of our best interest, or I'm going to call the cops. I think that that is a perfectly reasonable thing to do, and doesn't make me a douche. The cold does not abide. Cold does not abide. Cole, Cole's upset, so I don't know. I I, I, caused, I caused a couple of kids to get to get some stick time, which was pretty fun. <laughs> that's the that's the story. Some stick time. <laughs> yep. Oh God, never heard that. Hmm. Okay, tell me a story. All right, I am at the website um, dcabortionfund dot org. Fun or fund? Funda. Okay. Fund, like very fund different raiser. sites. Yep. yep. Slash donate. We have a slash donate, don't we? Uh, no, it's uh, slash tip jar. Tip jar. Okay, gotcha. Um, the DC Abortion Fund is the only organization in the District of Columbia region that focuses solely on dispersing small patient grants for abortion care in the community. It's a nonprofit. They want you to donate today. Your gift is tax deductible to the extent allowed by law. They also accept donations uh, that they call in-kind donations, an item that can be auctioned at fundraisers, uh, fundraiser events, uh, such as gift, gift certificates, sports tickets, gym passes, etc. Um, if you want to make a bigger difference, join their monthly sustainer program. Um, monthly st- sustainers provide a steady source of income and um, can pledge to callers year-round. Donors who sign up to give $10 a month and we only ask you this one time a year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, you get some tumblers that have a rocket engraved on them. <laughs> you no. get some stack soap, which is really good, by the way. Uh, uh, no, absolutely. You get like a half a bag of some some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah. So donors donors who sign up uh, to give ten dollars a month or more receive a uh, John Hodgman approved. No, wait, that's a different network. They receive a uh, a DCAF, which is Dist- District, of- District of Columbia Abortion Fund, um, coat hanger necklace. Oh, that is in poor taste. <laughs> that's a way to say thank you. Are you, are you kidding me? Nope. Oh, yeah, that's... That, 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 that probably should have gone through committee a little bit more. Yeah, to join as a monthly sustainer and receive your pendant, visit our online donation page, which is hyperlinked today, and in the dedication box, type in, quote, coat hanger. 
two words. <laughs> I thought you were going to say those damn Ross kids <laughs> to have your donation matched. <laughs> to, to have your donation matched by someone who won't be here tomorrow. <laughs> no, no. Ooh, that's that's rough, rough stuff. Oh, is that is that any different than uh, than, than than Christians wearing crosses though? Kind of like no, it's probably the same. It's probably the same thing. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah I was, you're, you're, you're worshiping the device, I suppose. So, no, it's true. You don't suppose anything. It's real. <laughs> no, I, I, su- I, su- I suppose. Uh, what, what I do suppose is like they're trying to make it so that you know, if people don't want their children, and I'm not having that conversation. Uh, about whether or not that act is right or wrong, but the, like from 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 their point of view, it's kind of like, all right, so we if 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 this if if this service is available to these people, but they still cannot get it because of because of price, and knowing that even still, the cost of raising a kid is either way more than having this procedure done, or like a lot more money over time, right? You know, okay, so we want to make sure that it's it, it's it's available and that price isn't a barrier to them having a kid that they don't want. You know, setting aside that, like, oh, there is abortion and or <laughs> there there is adoption rather. God, this is this is hairy. It just looks bad to have that fucking <laughs> coat hanger around it. Like, have a have a little heart that says hope, or like a or like a a, a gigantic gold pendant that says a second chance or something on it. Not a coat hanger. Ugh, that's gross. That's gross. We just come back to Dr. Dre education, man. Okay, what do you mean? (laughs) Biggest hoes on planet Earth are walking through the motherfucking neighborhood. You knew when you got with a nigga, he already had a woman. You knew he already had a family, but you fucked him anyway. And then when you thought you were going to lose a nigga, you went and got pregnant. Didn't you, bitch? Didn't you? Jeez, that's pretty rough, Chris. The old to keep a nigga baby. Mm. I don't even know if I... I don't know that I'm down with that. What? Hmm. I don't know. It's not, I've said it before twice. Have you? You let it go through. What, the N-word? In, oh, you've quoted it, this song two times. Yeah, they're lyrics, man. I know. They've been, I, no, they've been no. in the podcast before, no, man. No, no I... I I know that. No, trust me. I'm. I, I. I do enjoy censoring you on the fly. However, when you when you're when you're saying song lyrics, that's pretty cool. I'm just not sure I'm done with the sentiment behind. Oh, women just try and trap men into a relationship by having a baby. You mean it's, the old? It's, you mean the old to keep a nigga baby? Yeah. I see. You're, you're you're edging outside of the lines. I think a little bit. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't say it. Yeah. Doctor Doctor Dre did. Okay. <laughs> There, there, there's a certain editorial endorsement when you, when you say it aloud on a on a thing that I put my name on, though. Well, it's, <laughs> just so we, have a, we have a disclaimer. I don't really think that. I know. Okay. And neither do you, and neither do our employers or our friends <laughs> or anybody who knows our names, including the you? people who listen. Who are you? Oh, I don't know. Which one are you? I'm Cole. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Cole. I really don't like you. <laughs> Marker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, I don't know. That's that's pretty gross. There, there, there might they might be able to do a little bit better image control. I think, just a little bit. Why not a rocking chair? A, what do you What do you mean? Like instead of a coat hanger, why not a rocking chair? Well, to to, to your mind, what does a rocking chair uh, symbolize? Uh, and I will cut you off by giving my own answer. I believe a rocking chair symbolizes the front of a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Go. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> a rocking chair with a with a with a Stewart's orange and cream soda, which, which is where it. all babies found in a dumpster behind a Cracker Barrel are taken. Yeah. Did, <laughs> have you heard about the about the baby shoots in China? <laughs> baby shoots. That's what they call them. It's it, it's it's more like uh okay shoots so, and ladders. <laughs> the baby ladders. Have you heard about the baby ladders in like, China? It's it really ladder weird. boards as big as the piano from Big. <laughs> no, no, it's it, it, they're actually they're actually relatively humane. So since since we're talking about horrifying, relatively like <laughs> trash shoots in Brooklyn. Well, well no, like it's, it's 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 a little bit of a misnomer. It's not an you know it's not an island. It's a peninsula. Okay, um, but uh, kind of uh, like Crimea. 
Ugh, man, don't don't get me started on Crimea. <laughs> We'll be here all day with me mm-hmm. talking about like why it would probably be a very good idea to like move to like South America right now. <laughs> just like to go to, in. to just to just to go to like Tierra del Fuego and just like set up shop, you know, like like win- like winter and summer will be messed up, but uh, but you know we're we're gonna be a okay because like the se- I tell you what, like the like you know this the the second like China starts like throwing its weight behind uh, Russia, we're done for. Like like World War Three, man. We're we're like we're we're off the grid. We're done. So you want to escape war by going to the uh, Crown of Flames, <laughs> the Land of Flames? Oh my bad. Yeah, no, the the the, the Land of Fire. No, no. So <laughs> <laughs> it was Tierra. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, the baby shoots. So so you so you know like when uh like like when a baby's got Jack disease and they're trying to uh they're trying to diagnose it and it's put in the in the big in the big plastic uh, case and you got the Waldos. Uh, <laughs> Why do they kill them before they all Benjamin Button? I, I'm not even sure, huh? So you so you think that like as he as he ages rapidly is going to de-age and then die as a baby? Yeah, I saw demolition man. Okay, cool. Um, man, you know what? I haven't seen that for as much as I reference the visual style of Demolition Man. I've never seen it. Hmm. Wesley Snipes, uh, he he is a he is a member of the of the Free Men on Land, um, uh, movement, which is really really hilarious. They believe that you cannot be tried in any court of law because uh, most courts have flags that have uh, that have a gold fringe on them, which makes them an admiralty uh, flag, which means that they're under a different set of rules. It's pretty funny. Sea law. <laughs> it's, actually, yeah, it's like he believes that they're, that they're tried under nautical law. <laughs> oh man, like I, I, I can't even keep up with my notes here, man. We're we're moving, we're moving real quick here. No, but baby shoots. Uh, so so it's like a big, it's a big plastic case with a with, with a with a cradle in it, and it's kind of like in uh, like in America how they're like if you if you want to get rid of a baby, like there are places where you can legally do it. Which are you know like a fire station, a police station, the front of a Amnesty, Cracker Barrel, Amnesty dumpsters. Yeah, I mean, kind of. It's more like Amnesty stoops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a great sidekick for a seventies like law enforcement officer. <laughs> Amnesty shoots. Amnesty stoops. <laughs> He's a real jive talking black man. <laughs> Amnesty Stoops. This is my unofficial partner, Amnesty Stoops. He's he's like he's like Huggy Bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Fozzy Simpson. Fozzy. That's a, like, you, okay. Where are you coming up with these names? They're good names. Boxer Quan. No. <laughs> Come on. Just this one. All right. I don't even know. Uh, so, Chris. I like to keep uh, I like to keep up on the uh, on the on the trends on the internet. I, mm-hmm. I, I like to think that you know if I'm going to be a taste maker, I got to be a taster first, right? You got you got you got to know what's out there. You got to you got to dip your snoot in a bunch of tills. You, know, you got to get your beak wet and figure out what the people are what the, what the people are looking for. And Chris, the hotness on YouTube, the hotness on uh, the social media channels, unboxing videos. What? Have you seen any un- any unboxing videos, Chris? No. Well, since 2010, the number of YouTube clips with unboxing in the title has increased by 871%. Last year, in 2013, 2,370 day- uh, days or six and a half years worth of unboxing footage have been uploaded. Okay. And that's so- people opening presents? Kind of, kind of. So again, it's back to like cops. Uh, you know, is is this? Uh, you know, is is cops? Uh, you know, like being uh, white trash porn. What that means is like you. It's people who get a product and then on camera, usually like it's a it's a camera that's like mounted on a tripod, and you just see their arms and you hear them breathing, like really heavily, and describing. All right, uh, I'm cutting the shrink wrap here. <sighs> can see uh apple pays attention to the to the packaging the, cust- the customer experience uh here's an insert a warranty card and uh right here we've got the ipad <sighs> taking the, the 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 static cling off uh, yeah it's basically that so it's watching other people open the 
packaging that they buy stuff in. Okay. Okay. And people make a bunch of money off of it. Like some of them, like people who have like 2000 something videos, they just get sent products to open up on the air. And I believe that it stems from some kind of like prurient interest in like, oh man, I really want to like buy this thing. I'd like to own this, but I can't afford it. So I'm going to do the next best thing, which is watch consumer porn and see somebody else opening it up and pretend that I'm opening it up here too. Right. It's like, it's like POV porn for going to the mall. <laughs> you, at least one of my favorite genres. <laughs> <laughs> mall porn no yeah no no but just like people opening like kinder eggs uh, uh makeup like make it like it's just a bunch of a, bu- a bunch of makeup unboxings it's it's nuts i don't know should we break into that should we do should we do unboxings probably not okay i used uh the hey arnold doll you you, you got me as a uh um as a prop in an unboxing parody that i did yeah i saw that yeah it was pretty funny <laughs> I saw the picture, the still life, if you will. Yeah, no, I didn't do it. It didn't do any video because nah, screw that. Yeah, my, my copy of Dark Souls Two, where instead of getting the uh, the 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 game, the or the the game, the art book and the statue, I got a different game, uh, a library copy of Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie, and uh, instead of the statue, a uh, Hey Arnold doll, which you uh, very very kindly got me at a uh, at a uh, at a thrift store. Thrift Mart. Thrift Mart. Huh. Yeah. Unboxing, Chris. Unboxing. Hey, have you heard of a 17-year-old, 17-year-old man named Hung Dong? <laughs> okay. Uh, no. All right. Well, he uh, is being reported by North Korea as the first man to have landed on the sun. <laughs> you literally made me spit a beverage. <laughs> I just I, fun fact. You, okay, how hot is the surface of the sun, Chris? The journey only took him four hours. <laughs> That's amazing, right? They're so much further along than we thought. Yeah, North Korea a spokesperson is quoted as saying, "We are delighted to announce a successful mission to put a man on the sun." North Korea has beaten every other country in the world to the sun. <laughs> Hung Dong is a hero and deserves a hero's welcome when he returns home later this evening. <laughs> Chris, this is an Onion article. <laughs> it was said that the journey was made possible by traveling in the cover of darkness, which protected him from the extreme heat of the sun. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not interesting to just hear me laugh. It's it, it, like that is terrible radio. But what do you expect me to do? I don't know. How, how do you expect me to react to that? Fun fact. Fu- Only took four hours. Oh, I think. <sighs> Extreme superior nation, North Korea. Yeah, yeah. No, most 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 glorious leader. Whoops! World's ass to the sun. Uh, what? Whoops, world's ass to son. Well, okay, so I guess I get... All right, Here, here's how it goes. They spent so much time working on their rockets to make stuff go up to get them to the sun, right? Like, that's why they couldn't make any of them go over, and everything they've ever tried launching has gone into the Pacific Ocean, maybe, like, four miles east of there. They never did it at night, though. Mm, yeah, no, when the sun can't see, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Until Hung Dong had the balls, the courage, the tenacity, the the, the glory to get up there. I mean, come on. Yeah. <sighs> Wait a minute. So I'm doing some research here, Chris. Um... <laughs> okay. So this is this is quoting from an article. Uh, despite outlandish North Korean propaganda, like Kim Jong Il's vaunted all time golf scoring record and the supposed <laughs> discovery of <laughs> no, you haven't heard about that. No, no, no! I forget. Um, let let let's see here. Uh, what well, what did he say? Uh, oh gosh, score! What was his score? Uh, an amazing eleven aces. Yeah. So he they they claim that he uh, 
He fired a 38 under par round of 34 with 11 uh, with 11 holes in one. Oh my god! Yeah, at uh, at the at the single North Korean uh, golf golf course, 18 hole golf course. Rather, I think they have a lot of uh, pitch and putts. <laughs> wow! Yeah, like the Shelby shithole, right? A lot, a lot of par threes, but no full uh, 18 holes. But he goes out there first time he's ever golfed, scores a 34, breaking the all time <laughs> record. First time ever. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, oh, beginner's luck, right? Um, <laughs> no, damn, damn dictator oh, jumped up, bit my hand off, <laughs> cut me down on my prime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, but uh, so, so, okay, so uh, the, 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 their propaganda pre- pretty goofy. Uh, All time golf scoring record, also the discovery of a unicorn lair in Pyongyang. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, we did. Um, uh, this one would already be sending up red flags, even if it wasn't easy to track down the original source. This article appeared, uh, originally appeared in the Waterford Whispers News, a satirical Irish site like The Onion that runs headlines like groundbreaking WIT study finds link between obesity and overeating and world leaders renew international lie to people pact. Hmm. Mm. I think, I think they, I think they like had one good hit there because both of those are just incredibly unfunny and I know unfunny. No, you do. Yeah. And I, I can say that. <laughs> You're allowed to. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But uh, for for a second there, I was I was happy to think that they... Uh, uh, Kim Jong-un is a fucking dick, is what he is. I wouldn't put anything past that, that, oh, that crazy stuff, dictator, I suppose. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. And in other international news, Chris, can I tell you about a man... Used to be that they would call them. They would call him Matthew, age thirty-four, British resident, trying to get a passport, but uh, uh, they wouldn't let him use his actual name. Matthew, he's not Matthew anymore. Chris, Matthew isn't here anymore. Do you know who is here? No, King of Inkland, King Body Art to the Extreme Inkite. <laughs> okay, he's an Inkite. He's an Inkite. The Ink- Inkite Empire. Ink Dash Ites. Yes. Uh, praise the sun. Dynasty. Um, yeah. No, okay, so 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 King of Inkland by bo- King of Inkland King Body Art the Extreme King uh Inkite. Man, I'm sorry I keep mispronouncing your name. King of Inkland King Body Art to the Extreme Inkite. Uh it's really, really tough because it's kind of long. Too long, in fact, to put onto your passport. Even though it is on your driver's license, so bully for you, as they would say. <laughs> what if it is on your two page driver's license? <laughs> yeah. It's a trifold on your driver's pamphlet. Mr. Uh, King of Inkland, King Body Art to the Extreme Inkite, is, uh, is called that because he is the, uh, the the record holder, at least in Britain, I believe, uh, for being the most tattooed man. He spent over $40,000 covering about 90% of his body in tattoos, including one of his eyes. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> The more I think about it, the more I, the more I realize I'm never going to get a tattoo. <laughs> I just had that conversation with somebody uh, yesterday. Yeah, or today. How did that go? Uh, it was fine. I just was talking about oh, I don't think I'll ever get one unless I'm terminally ill. Oh, and they give you the target. What they give you the target? Shoot here. Dummy. Oh, no, 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 no. I, if I was terminally ill, I would get X's on my eyelids. <laughs> this has been Those Damn Roskets. So, Chris, there are some things that people can do um, if they want to, uh, if they want to uh, uh, make us feel good. Right. Uh, yeah, run- you know best. You you need the affirmation. That's why you have a network. <laughs> I'm I'm so small. I'm I am I am so small. Um, but uh, no, they can go to facebook.com slash those damn Ross kids, uh, submit stories. We like seeing those uh, whenever people uh, take the initiative, and uh, those usually make it up on the air. Um, additionally, uh, you can leave us a rating or review in iTunes. We've had a couple pop up since we came back, which is uh, which is very nice. And if you'd like to support the network monetarily, uh, just go to duckfeed.tv slash tip jar and you will get a special amulet that is shaped. No, no, we can't do that. What? We can't do that. All right. Uh, no, uh, you, you'll get our uh, you'll get our undying love. Uh, also, just shop on Amazon using our link there and we get some money from that. 
doesn't cost you anything extra. And there are other shows in the network you can check out too. Uh, they're all pretty good. I like them. Uh, yeah. Did I miss anything, Chris? You got it. Sorry, America. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, man.